Mention real time and the first thing that probably springs to mind is the TV series 24 which had Kiefer Sutherland, as, as he liked to call himself, Federal Agent Jack Bauer. And over the course of eight seasons, or eight and a half if you count the revival Live Another Day, he had very long days taking down bad guys. And yes, most of the villains were male, but there was the occasional female, and when he did exist he tended to be very memorable. The three standouts were Sarah Clark as the traitor agent Nina Myers, Mago Hel Harazi played by Michelle Fairley in the Revival series, and last but definitely not least, Mia Kirshner as Mandy. And she had the notable distinction of appearing in the very first episode, and indeed of being the first plot twist villain out of many in the series. Now being a woman didn't usually save you from Jack Bauer, if you got in his way you usually ended up dead. So it's quite something to survive, and the reason Mandy did I think was that she was always very professional, cold hearted yes, but she never let the emotions get the better of her. It's just a shame there was never a 24 movie with Mandy as the villainess, otherwise she could have made me top 20. One movie example that used real time was this 1990s thriller starring Johnny Depp and Christopher Walken in his usual role as a threatening bad guy who had the rather unimaginative alias of Mr Smith. Here the plot centred around getting Johnny Depp's character to assassinate the governor of California by holding his young daughter hostage as leverage. And Mr Smith's accomplice was a woman who was never given a name in the movie itself but called Miss Jones on the credits. And she is secondary to Mr Smith, but she did get a few scenes of note. One of the best ones is where she threatens the child with a gun. Well... It's a comfort to know you got the cojones to pull that thing out. Whether or not you got the balls to pull the trigger, we still gotta see. And the plot develops as you might expect for this sort of film. The main character tries to warn people but often finds that Mr Smith has planned for this or the people he tells us are working with the villains and therefore can't be trusted. He does eventually manage to enlist the help of a Vietnam veteran and some hotel staff members and thwarts the assassination attempt. And when we get to the final showdown, it has a hero taking on Mr. Smith, while Miss Jones is left to the Vietnam vet. Now it is a decent confrontation we do get at the end, and does have an inventive takedown. Nothing like a good wing, Jim. But the reason I didn't put this film in the main rankings was that I felt the villainess was too minor and always in the shadow of Christopher Walken's character. The best movie example I know with a female villain is 88 minutes which actually runs for about 20 minutes longer than that. And here the villainess is working with somebody else and isn't revealed until the very end but despite that she has much more presence than the villainess in Nick of Time did. And before the real time segment which is the middle part of the film there's a prologue set several years earlier where we're introduced to a serial killer who likes to string his victims up, cut them and let them bleed to death. After his court we skip forward to the present where the killer is now on death row awaiting execution. And this guy has a vendetta against forensic psychologist Jack Graham who is the main character played by Al Pacino. And now there's a copycat killer on the loose who wants to make things personal. Hello. Hello? You have 88 minutes to live. What? You know how long 88 minutes can be, don't you? That's 11.45 a.m. Who's this? TikTok. Who the hell is this? TikTok. Hey, hey. It doesn't take Graham long to figure out that Forster, the serial killer, is working with somebody on the outside, and the obvious suspect is a guy in black leather who likes to hang suspiciously around lecture halls. But when somebody uses a voice disguiser, it usually indicates a female, and that would fit Forster's MO based on what we've seen previously, where he had a young attractive lawyer doing his bidding. Other potential copycat candidates are Graham's assistant and a number of his students, and one of these is named Lauren Douglas. Lauren, Dr. Graham. What happened to you? He's wearing a leather jacket. He's out there. I bit his hand. It's bleeding. His hand is bloody. Can you get him? You're okay? Go get him now. I'm fine. Now savvy viewers will know we never saw the incident take place and the suspect is nowhere to be found when Graham goes searching so they're probably going to keep Lauren on the table as a possible killer. Graham does thankfully have the help of his assistant to do the research while he does the legwork with another female student and it's not long after they do some investigating that they have an encounter with a biker who tries to run them down. 
And throughout the movie, the killer leaves messages for Graham, including a tape recording at his apartment, which relates back to an incident that took place many years earlier, where his younger sister was killed in a crime that took 88 minutes, and that's why he's been given 88 minutes to live. And not long after that, the guy in black leather shows up, only to be seen off by the real killer moments later. Guy, there's no problem here. Put down the gun. I'm fine. And things then continue to heat up with the various women in Jack's life being targeted. And this includes the woman who slept with the night before, who is seen off in an attempt to frame him. And while Graham struggles to convince his FBI agent friend of his innocence, two women in his life are both call him to say they're involved in the plot. But attentive viewers will easily spot that they're under duress while they're doing this. Graham has already started to put the pieces together and has already realised Lauren isn't who she says she is. And sure enough, once Graham is lured to his office, the real villainess is revealed. Oh, God. Punctual, Dr. Graham. I'm going to give you a B-plus for effort. Yeah. Dean Johnson's indisposed, but I'm sure she'd say hello if she could. As for your heroic friend, Kim, she didn't quite make the grade. Lydia. Got the name right. Lydia Darty, Copycat murderer. God, I wish Forrester could see your face. You look so totally clueless. I hope that's not a gun you're holding. Is that a gun, Dr. Graham? Most of the confrontation is psychological rather than physical, but the actress, Lily Sobieski, comes across as suitably menacing. Put it on the floor. Slide it to me. To me. I would have liked to have seen more, or at least more detailed flashbacks of Lauren as the killer, but we don't get those, so we're really just left with a good final confrontation. I went to great lengths to pull this off. Sean really appreciates the quality of my work. Timing the phone calls, perfecting the ropes and pulleys, implicating everyone close to you, coaching Carol and Kim, all the while staying invisible. It was me, Jack, who said he was. You know what I don't understand? How in God's name does anybody give up their free will? How do you do that? 45 seconds. I saw you. You came to my class. I remember you. You were intelligent, an individual. You challenged things. You challenged me. You challenged ideas. You were your own person. How could you ever, ever allow yourself to be so manipulated by this guy? 30 seconds. Are you going to take the fall for this guy? If that's what he wants, so be it. You see, Jacko, I'm a true believer. Well, then you better believe that there's an FBI agent with a gun pointed right at your head at this moment. Believe it. No more kidding. Believe. Believe it. I believe your time's up, Dr. Graham. an okay-ish demise that could and perhaps should have been a lot better. <laughs>